Shout out one more time for, for Peter one time that's on the couch with us. Hey man, shout out to you, man. Hey, and if y'all could just keep making applause, like it's not just me. Like I work with a team of lighting, video. I yeah. work with a studio. I got an uh, internship program from Columbia College, and the kids set up chances rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a whole bunch of stuff that like. I don't know. I can't even explain this because I'm so bad at explaining stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? My like, captions on IG be like one sentence because I have no idea what to say ever. But it's a lot of pieces. So, again, like the city, you know, I really try to employ anybody that I'm around, anybody that I'm with, so we can make a better product together. Because, you know, this idea is not mine. I work for somebody else, and it takes, you know, a team to really build. Like, that's really important, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't do it by myself. Y'all understand that? Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Do y'all really understand that, though? <laughs> okay, bad, 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 bad. Yeah, it took a team to get this this here tonight. It takes a team, and, and I think over the years with me building my business after sports with Chasing Greatness Productions and, and now with my connections with in the in the community of being in Soho and the, in the music industry, you, um, I've been able to meet, and we, we both Gemini's, birthday, day after. Like, it don't, I, I heard a lot, have mercy. Please don't don't disrespect Gemini's tonight. Hey, yo 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 yo, y'all gotta chill. Oh, please, gotta chill. Cause we're we're just, we're human beings too. We just a little gentle, gentle a little bit. June twenty first. Mine's is June twentieth. So. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey hey. For the push out through a roller coaster tonight. Nah, nah. But but seriously though, man, I've been I've been able to connect with Pete. And um, from our first uh, our first meeting, it was, it was like, man, we definitely got to get on the couch and, and show them this experience. But let's talk a little bit about how, how did we get here? How did you get here? How did this all come about, music, producing, et cetera? Like, where did it all begin? Um, I know it's a loaded question, but like, when did you realize musically that you were gifted? The origin of music, I just gave it all to you in one. <laughs> but like... Go ahead, bro. Like, where is the start? question that y'all look at interviews and dread? You're like, damn, what is he gonna say? Like, oh my <laughs> god! All right, all right, real quick, real quick. I'm from Mount South. I'm from Chicago. I went to high school in the city. I went to college in the city. I went to Curie. I went to Chicago State. I taught music and piano for like six years. I was a teacher. Uh, I went on tour with Chance in 20. I'm speeding through it. All right, so y'all gotta. It's too much. I'm so sorry, but because it's like a blessing, but also I don't want to break down every single thing. Uh, I play piano. I play keys. Uh, in high school, I, I, I was I love computers. Everybody around me was way better at music than me, so I just decided to record everybody's music instead of trying to play with them because that was my end to be cool with their ass. So I was doing that <laughs> with gospel choirs and stuff like that. I went to church in the city where I participated in a choir and things like that. Gospel was in my roots and things of that nature. You know, Chicago got, we got the best musicians in the world. Like, come on, G. We got the best singers in the world, That's too. Facts. Like, come on. A hey, few of them in this room right hey, now, too. And, and Memphis, too. I'm rocking with you, Vern. You raw as hell at everything, G. <laughs> hey, again, that's Vern. He's Taylor Bennett's music director. He plays almost every instrument. He helps me on a ton of my records. He produces. Y'all can make some noise for him. He produces music as well. Shout out, Vern. You know what I'm saying? We out here working. All right, so anyway, from the city, like I said, and then I started touring with Chance in 2013. I was making music in the city, like jazz, R&B, soul, and hip-hop. Um... I don't know, ever since 2013, 2012, 2011, I made records like Hey Ma, I made Brain Cells, I made Good Ass Intro, I made Cocoa Butter Kisses, I made like a lot of songs off. Uh, yeah, Cocoa I, Butter I Kisses like, was, <laughs> yeah, Cocoa Butter Kisses was one of the ones that was one of my favorite. <laughs> I would, yeah. I've been with Chance like for a long time, so I've been EPing his albums or making like 51 to 52% of his projects for a minute or working with his teams to make sure that. You know, he, he his ideas as a client get across and things like that. Um, and that's been cool. We toured the world. I'm from the south side of Chicago. I, yeah, went to, man. I went to I took my brother to Japan, G. Like that was a dream. Shout like that out. was crazy. Experiences, man. That's a that's a different experience. The only place I haven't been is like Antarctica, Iceland, and Alaska, you know what I'm saying? And Greenland. So like it's so it's those a are some blessing. specific places. I'm from South Side very specific. I, yeah. I got a list for, you know what I'm saying? And that was very specific. And music for me, like, it started out as a necessity. I played, I played, played. Uh, I guess I'm athletic now, but I don't claim that. I played zero sports. My brother was the sports homie. I was the little weird kid making beats in my room. And ever since then, God blessed me to stay on the path, you know. He's lighted to my path, lamp to my feet, and he really just took me to places I Amen. really had no clue. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's where I started, man. I started in the city. I yeah. started 
being part of my community just like this. And then God just said, Phew. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's cool to see, man. I, I, you know what I really like tonight that we both acknowledging the man upstairs. Um, it's a lot of, it's, it's hard now, nowadays to find rooms and spaces where it can be openly talked about or it can be accepted. Um, again, it's not a room where I'm trying to, we're trying to, hey, be a preacher to you guys, but uh, we want y'all to know the source of like of what we do and how we do it and where it come from. And so uh, we wouldn't be here without him. So um, how long, have you been creating music for a long time, but like, what does your creative process look like, your, your flow? And I think we, I've been able to see it this week, but talk a little bit about the flow, because we're going to show a film about it, but exactly. talk a little bit about it. I, um, uh, how long have I been making music? For, for a minute now, since I was little, you know, that vibe, that story, everybody been making music since they was a kid. Uh, professionally, probably the last, like, uh, 22, maybe 23 years. Um, and... My credit process looks like what right now looks like what my client needs, whatever any of my clients needs or, or, or what I need to do. F for this specific talk, we're just gonna stick with music direction. I'm just gonna stick with that. Uh, it looks like um, right now it looks like scheduling rehearsals for musicians, finding external musicians for for artists. It looks like a ton of calls with 30 people I do not know sometimes, <laughs> or it looks like Zoom with five people on a management team. Um, and that's actually part of my creative process now. Surprisingly, when I was a kid, I was like, I'm just going to sit at piano and make chords and shit like that. But now I talk to people. I try to make moments happen. Did anybody go to the show last night? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, there was one part of the show that his fam came out at the end. Man, I, gee, I, I, was, I was about to shed a tear. But moments like that, I'm able to work with a team and be like, I right, look. At this song, I need security to go get the family to come downstairs because this song is in this key and they can't get here at this time and blah, blah, blah. And then trying to find out, like, when's the right time for them to actually grab a mic and say something audible on stage. Like, that's a long part of my creative process right now. Or, you know, writing out a ton of sheet music for string players to perform at a museum or, you know, things like that. So it's a large span of things. But... Getting the artist music idea to stage or to TV is like one of my main jobs that I do for other people at the moment. Yeah, that, that process for me, man, I, I think we both do the things similar. I think now, like I said, when we, when we met, I wanted this experience with this music to be something that's, that's fun. But um, outside of that, you know, I'm a film director, I'm a creative director. You know, we have no cause. We got um, other things outside of the art um, sometimes it gets us distracted. And so, you know, one of my next question, because, you know, on the couch, we get deep. You know, I don't want to have, real, it's like standard questions. Pause. Big pause. Uh, big pause. I had to rewind a little bit, but whatever. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. <laughs> your, your creative process. Um, Y'all wild, man. Y'all wild. Y'all got to chill out. <laughs> Y'all got to chill out. Um, but during that creative process, how do you find time to separate business from your art, your passion, which a lot of times for me, like I said, music is therapy for me. So how, how do you find that time with your schedule being so busy? You know what? I'm going to actually put this in a pretty, um, uh, how do you say it? I don't know. I'm a utilitarian, so I like to make use of things in like an applicable way. Um, a lot of times that I find time for my own creative process, since I'm split brain and pulled between a lot of people at one time, is the morning. Honestly, like the quiet hours, like 12, 12 midnight to 3, or like 5 a.m. to like 8 a.m. It's less, it's less wind, it's less sounds, it's hella birds. Like, what the fuck, where they come from? But it's like <laughs> less sounds, so you're able to concentrate a little bit more. And that's the best time that I've been able to like lock in, even organize my email. <laughs> Man. Or like play piano or write a song. So, applicably, like that. Would, I can't say that word, but that would be um, like the times and how yeah. I actually like you separate burn, myself. You burn from the midnight stuff. hour. Like, yeah, yeah that, well, I reserve time for my creative process. You know. Yeah. A lot of people try to put it in, like you know, with their other shit and stuff like that. Yeah, you could do that, but you're probably not giving yourself a hundred percent that you could. So I just reserve time for that stuff. You know. Yeah, that that process. I think everybody has their own process. Um, I think once you find your process and what works for you, and I think I operate in your, your way a little bit. Like, I need to be up late night when everybody sleep. I feel like that's when everything's still, and I'm able to really um, just meditate on what I'm working on and focus in, because it'd be a lot of noise throughout the day. 
Um, but on top of Chicago, we have hella sirens. Loki, you know? Rick Rubin so um, talks about the quiet hours and how it has like an effect on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk about it. I don't. I mean, I'm, y'all can look up on the line and he could talk about it to y'all better than I could. But like I said, the air is more still for for people who make audio stuff. That that, that means less actual actual noise. You know, sound is air vibrating, so. It's just actual less noise happening, so you're able to actually hear certain frequencies and harmonies a little bit better than you would before. Like things line up a little bit better. Never knew that and, until yeah. now. Facts. Me neither. Sure. Yeah, and I it's think that's. Uh, I think that's why I wanted people to see this this conversation because again, it's a lot of stuff we don't know. Um, I never knew that at night there's there's a still hour for us to have that audio be able to be more clear. Um, again, this is something that we're all learning. But how is it being from Chicago, with with so many greats and legends here? How has it been from Chicago and being in this industry and being in it since you have been in it for a while? How has it been being from Chicago and then having that? Yeah, Yo, y'all know industry? it's the best city in the world, especially in the summer, for sure. We know that. Hey. We already know. Um, but it's been amazing. You know, a lot of people from Chicago get a lot of respect. We get a lot of, got a lot of good musicians. Like, we got some good raps. Like, I don't know if y'all ever look at, like, these cats who play with, like, soul people like D'Angelo or people who play in, like, I don't know, uh, who, who play in anybody's band, like Scissors or Ari Lennox band, anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Hypnotic, you know what I'm saying? That was around for a while. You went crate digging for well, that, that one. That voice Damn. is back. Who was that? Um, and we just got a lot of good musicians, so we have a lot of good credibility. But also, I'm sorry, it's also frustrating, too. Because a lot of our people move away to other cities. Why is that? Can you? Why? Why is that? Well, I, I I'll just say it a little bit. Um, because I might want to talk down ever because I'm not a negative person, but we are currently establishing industry within our city where we can work and we can thrive. So before we did that, a lot of people have moved away to other industries what they can thrive in. You know, which makes sense. I mean, you got to look out for your family, get money, and be with places where making music makes money, you know what I'm saying, or provides for you, but we're starting to get that industry now, so it's frustrating, like, telling everybody, hey, come back, come back, come back, when everybody wants to, like, go away, you know, well, do I think thing. you're doing a great job, though, with, with RCM. Oh, I, I appreciate think, that. I built a studio. Uh, shout out to RCM, y'all. Um, you, your, your space, like, again, like I said, your space that you create, you got um, interns, you got... Um, we got a couple programs going on over there, and you got yeah, something for, for sure. the youth. Talk about that. A couple of years ago, um, I don't know, like maybe five years ago, four years ago, I started a studio in the city called RCM. It's Record Chicago's Music. And my idea was I was really tired of waking up and going to somebody else's place and recording some music. So I just got, kind of got my own. And then the pandemic happened, and I was able to just like lock it down and provide a space that uh, really helps people who want to record, just record music. Like It's anywhere between fancy to really homegrown so I did that up for a while and uh, it's still up in Logan Square right now I have a internship program that runs out of there through Columbia College we teach people how to engineer mix and master and things like nice, that nice 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 snap, snap. Uh, we partner with um, a, a non-profit called Surf Ghana in Ghana and we built a studio in Ghana that's operating it's completely free with Spotify and Kendrick Amen. Lamar and things like that. Like, yep. it's amazing. Like, God really it. put me in position to that's be dope. in those places. I'm just so, when y'all be like, come on, I'll be like, yeah, come on, G, that's crazy. Yeah, bro. Hey, <laughs> it God, be blowing my it. mind each time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's, that's God, bro. It, it definitely Bless is God, for sure, you know. And uh, I just want to keep doing that in the city. I, I want to, I'm just one person, G, so I want to encourage other people to do that all the time, too. Or if you got an idea for your community, just do that shit, you know? Nah, man, that's love, man. And, and shout out to you for doing that. I think, again, like I'm, everything that I do, I want to make sure we incorporate the youth because they're looking at us. Like I said earlier, they listen to the words that we're saying and our lyrics. So, talk, you know, talk about your, your, your Grammy Award winning, Grammy nominated. That, that's huge. You know, you're from Chicago, and I, I got to emphasize, emphasize that because um, Chicago got so many legends, but it's... To be nominated in so many categories must be amazing, but talk about that feeling and like what has, has that done for you to be where, where you at now? At what, winning a Grammy, what it immediately did for me, my mom was like, all right, cool, you don't gotta go to college, you good. Like, you don't gotta go back. I was like, damn, that's all it took out to win an award? Like, oh shit. What happens when niggas win the Nobel Peace Prize? Like, that's crazy. Yeah, we gonna. <laughs> Uh, but for real, it was it was crazy. I get to work with my brothers from Chicago, like Chance and Nico and Greg and yeah. Nate Fox and like all all the other guys, Cam, Reese, all the other team, and I get to work with them. And we get to be niggas from the South Side and the West Side and win an award and walk on stage and 
thank God for it. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that blew my mind. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't expect that. I could never see it happen like that. So every time I think about it, I am just get so meek and so humble because, like, I get put in that position, like, every two years. Like, now I've, I've been nominated for a Grammy, which is amazing. And, like, wow. I don't even expect that when I'm working on a song. Y'all, y'all think I'm in the lab, like, sweating, like, damn, this got to win a Grammy. No, I was... It's like songs that sometimes I wrote in like 10 minutes with somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like you never know how things work. And it's a lot of our friends and musicians that are talented that go through that same thing. You know, look at these credits, G. Your friend next to you might have an award. You not, might not even know that shit, honestly, you know. And look at what they're doing with it. So I, I'm just humbled. Like I get to walk in the room and be amongst the greats. I mean, y'all know who wins Grammys. Yeah. Like I get to be amongst the people that win Grammys. Like that's amazing to me, you know what I'm saying? So... Just, it's a humbling experience, man. I, yeah. I get to ex- spread that experience of, yeah. I know, I know, I'm making light of it, y'all. Like that's just my personality. I'm sorry, but I like being normal because it makes it seem like everybody it, can it, do it too. Gee. We gotta you know normalize it. Like, yeah, it is normal. It's, we gotta make these conversations more normal. That's why I have these conversations because, um, again, we we're beacons, we're, we're vessels, and you know, I just think again, like I'm very prideful of you know where I'm from. We all are, um, but. When it, when it comes down to making music, you know, what validates, what do you look for in a song for it to be valid in your ears over the years? Because I know you hear a lot of songs. I know you guys go through a lot of, you know, you got a lot in your catalog, but talk to me about what validates something for you. What What is your ears used to hearing? What, what you need to hear for it to validate? Damn, that's a crazy question. I got it from AI. Because it's like... No, nah, I'm lying. I did. I, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Chat GPT, Joe ass. Cause it's like <laughs> that's crazy. No, it's just fine. <laughs> I pull out that AI no. answer too. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, gee, there's no cheat code to validation of music. Cause like, man. Cause really, who the fuck am I when I listen to somebody's song? Like, I like it or I don't like it. Period. Like, if you put in that hard work and I can understand what's going on, then that shit is valid. If it's not that, then I mean, every artist needs to be able to develop themselves and be in a position where they can be developed. So, you know, art's never done. It's very subjective. But, like, uh, validity is just in the eye of the beholder. You know what I'm saying? To be honest with you. Shit can't sound bad, though. Ah, don't tweak. Like, well, it could sound bad. The volume levels could be way crazy. What's up, Farley? He's a mix engineer I work with over at Steppenwolf, right? Yeah, it makes some noise for uh, engineers in Chicago. Shout out, shout out. Yeah. My homie Tom in the corner, he like, damn, you gonna shout me out, bro? I set this whole thing up. <laughs> Tom is a Soho engineer, y'all yeah, see shout him. out to Thomas May. Hey, buy him everything. a shot, because he do all the sound for Soho. <laughs> yes, yes. Please show Thomas yeah. love, y'all. Yeah, hey, but for real, though, like, um, um, I just don't have a secret to that, because, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Either I like it, I don't, or it's finished, or it's not, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I think like, I asked that the valid question, just because, like, Validation is a a big word, and we in this culture we live in, you know, we we look at a lot of stuff for validation. We look for likes, comments, um, people, certain things um, to validate us. But what is what is something again? Like you Grammy, you you want you want a Grammy, and you work with some amazing artists. You're working with Chance. You work with so many different energies. Um, how do you separate yourself from working with artists? Because you're an artist too. You got, al- you got a couple albums out. You just had an album out, Catch. You got a couple tracks. How do you k- find time for your art? Because you have a sound, too. Um, Another chat GPT question. <laughs> no? uh, how do I find time for myself or how myself like works into artistry? I, I, again, like I really try to pay attention to what the artist or producer or person that I'm working with needs. Like Sometimes they need Peter Contell, the artist, to come in with a choir. If you guys don't know, Catch, my album that came out during the pandemic, it's got, uh, <laughs> it's got a ton of uh, gospel because I write a lot of gospel. I have a choir here in Chicago and a whole bunch of singers. If y'all, not, if y'all are free, I got a show September 12th and September 7th in Chicago. I don't yeah, so know, I man. Up, you got to DM me, bro. You know, I don't know where it's at. Yeah, it's <laughs> my homie Madison Ryan Ward. I'm opening for her. And then me and Nico Segal, we're going to do a show on the 12th with Shawnee Dead. So it's going to be what's up. Um, nice. But uh, it really just depends on what they need. I really try to listen. Like, I just really try to listen. Like, artists, they be talking all over the place. So I'd be like, all right, what does y'all music need for? Like, 
do you need a choir? No. Okay, then let's call your homie who got some fire drums and tell him to put some drums on the, on the record. You know what I'm saying? Like, or your homie who plays bass or guitar. Like, so it really just depends on what the music needs. Like, I learned how to listen and not just jump into like what I think I might need to do as an artist on a track. Like, what does the music need? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's good. And I think. I'm sorry. And it takes being around a lot of different types of music for me to make those professional opinions. So listen to music, y'all. It, I mean, I love music. If y'all love music too, y'all should listen to songs sometimes. Get some headphones. Yeah. Niggas be bumping music in the car only, but get some headphones, G, for real. Hey, this is completely off topic. Them new Apple headphones that everybody rocking, what's up with them? I ain't got none yet. I talked Are to Brian good? about them. I got a couple reviews. Oh, we gonna boo. Because them joints okay. look hard from a like cat, like culture standpoint. I feel like it's just a thing for like a trend. We're talking about tomatoes, tomatoes. Is tomatoes. it a trendy thing? They six hundred dollars. Jeez. Oh shit, six hundred dollars. I was going through the airport. I was going through the airport, and I, yeah, six hundred, and then tax like maybe six forty nine ninety nine. That's a phone. Yeah, it is a phone. But back on topic, I don't know. I just thought somewhere real quick. Um, Acid Rap, the concert was last night. Um, again, like I said, we were showing the film, and I, we got, it's 9 o'clock, we went a little bit over, but bear with us. Talk about the concert last night, um, that experience, um, and just that relationship with you and Chance to create that experience, what you've been doing. This is a for real chat GPT question. This one for real. Now, on, 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 on a serious out. note, I know about, <laughs> I know about chat GPT, but this is all me, though. My, my, I got an iOS system on a whole other level. Okay, it's, it's, it's different. I, I believe you. It's different. Uh, Chance, you know, I know him from Chicago. We homies, like I said, made hey man, brand sales. Like I remember meeting him and doing some music in a, in a studio that was in a garage in the alley. It wasn't like tore up and anything. It looked really nice, but it was in the alley, you know what I'm saying? But we just, he had a necess necessity for having a band on tour. Before he did that, I was on, store, on tour with him when he was touring with Mac Miller and some other people, just checking his sound or making sure he was good. So, um, it happened just being just in Chicago and working in the music scene, just being consistent and trying to be a hard worker. I played piano with some of the guys that I play in a band with now, like when I was in high school, like my homie Nico Segal, he plays horn. We've played, been playing music together since we were 15, so it's been real awesome working with him. So that's our relationship. Like we, we yeah. just know, know each other from playing music. Same thing with Sticks. Like I know him for a million years. Like in Kizzy's days, I don't know if y'all know what Kizzy's days is. KTD. Shout out. I ain't hear you make no noise, Roger G. I know you know what Kiss's A's is, bro. Yes, of course. Yeah, so just knowing these cats in Chicago and being able to be a part of the community is how that yeah. uh, relationship started, you know? And it, it yeah, and, it, and it's, it's amazing, man, because it's turned into, a, was it 10-year anniversary? Of Acid Rap. 10 of years of Acid Rap. 10 years. Crazy. Shout out, shout out to y'all on that project, man. It's been it's been an um, amazing um, journey this past couple of weeks, you know, you know, just sitting with you and being in our sessions and then most recently this rehearsal leading up into acid uh rap and then now this couch experience. I just wanna say bro, I appreciate you, you know, working with me through our both our busy schedules to fight through all the scheduling just to, to get to this moment because again, we wanted to create this for for, for us and y'all to just have an experience and have fun and just listen to good music and, and just have fun. Bro, thank you man. Yeah. For real, <laughs> man. A genuine thank nah, you. You ain't gotta say. You ain't gotta say nothing in return. Like these things for, for me personally allow me not to be a gatekeeper of knowledge, the knowledge that can necessarily yeah. somebody else can pursue. You know what I'm saying? This yep. is a lot of behind the scenes work. It's not something we get to talk about often. So I'm glad I get to share this in your space that you created. Love, my boy. G. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Make some noise for KP one time. Man, thank you. Um, and I'm also, as you as a developing artist, glad you got to see how things look in the stratosphere that's absolutely the inside. Right. You know what I'm saying? For real. Because those things are what push, for me, seeing people like that is what made me be able to get a show together. Right. What made, what made me know what to do. Because like, there's no rules in this shit. You know what I'm saying? So nah. like, figuring out what's going on is a good first step. <laughs> no lie. So man. I'm glad you were there, man. For nah, sure. No, I appreciate for you, real, bro. I appreciate yeah. you yeah. tapping yeah. in with this man. Y'all, one time off with Peter, man. Give him some love. Hey, really, thank y'all, man. I work out with some of y'all. I hang out with some of y'all. Thank y'all for coming through. I really y'all so much. Yeah. We love you. Thank you. I love you.